on the wheel of life you see the uh, the picture for Nama Rupa is a is a boatman rowing a boat that the boat is like the body and the boatman who steers the boat and drives the boat is the mind because this body by itself has no power to do anything it needs desire and intention in order to uh, tell this body what to do the desire to live is inherent you know even in the even in the cell and this desire that you know is, is uh, powered all of evolution you know from the first cell that uh, you know ar uh, arose in the ocean and then those cells divided and and they gradually you know, form living organisms and each organism then wanted to survive and then they developed the means to uh, eat others or to, to defend themselves and the survival of the, and the fittest, the ones that could adapt to uh, survive and the ones that didn't uh, adapt to the natural change uh, uh, died. struggle to survive but nobody survives in the end and ultimately no one uh, survives uh, uh, ultimately I mean, survival is a relative thing but uh, you know the consciousness will go on even after the death of an individual body it's what <coughs> activates the body and mind is, is consciousness and again powered by this desire to survive the consciousness then seeks out some other form of existence in order to survive in one way or another. When the mind becomes still, it reflects everything like the like the perfect reflecting uh, lake, everything is reflected. Birds fly overhead, the reflection is, uh, is in the water. The water doesn't reject, hold or reject anything. Things just, reflections just go in and out of the, across the surface of the, of the lake. Whatever comes within the range uh, of the, the lake surface is reflected. Everything just naturally uh, rises and passes away through the uh, space of awareness. The dream is the, the mind's creation of its, its repressed uh, desires or a creation of its aspiration. And this has been said by all the uh, ancient sages that uh, the external world is a projection of the mind. If we have fear of the outside, that means because we are, we are having fear within us and we project it in the outside, we see the world as a, a bad, evil place. That the mind creates so many fears, but most of them turn out to be kind of uh, baseless and people live in a prison of the fears. I love to go a wandering along the mountain track. And as I go, I love to sing with my knapsack on my back. Valerie, Valera, Valerie, Valera. <laughs> Why walk? Well, nature gave us two legs, 
And the nature in our body connects with the nature outside. Out in the, the forest, it's easy to kind of just forget yourself and just imagine that you're just another plant or another tree, you know, in the forest and the mind can, can open up. You're able to walk and feel the, the kind of the, the sensations in the body, whether it's aching muscles or it's the heart beating or it's the breathing. These are all natural vibrations and, and they connect with the, the, the natural vibration that's in the warmth of the sun and the wind and the sound of the stream uh, going by. And so that helps to uh, bring a, a unity and a and a, and a oneness to the experience of consciousness is no longer divided as me here and the outside there. You just have vibrations in nature when the outer and the inner merge, and that's beautiful. fire, the sun, and air, all the four elements. The elements that make up this physical body, the elements that make up nature, basically that's all there is, is these four elements. Muktanath is the you know, sort of final destination and Muktanath means the place of liberation and of course that is the, the goal of the spiritual life and meditation uh, which symbolizes the liberation and the end of the trek of, of life, trekking over the Himalayas of the mind to reach liberation and trekking over the, the physical Himalayan mountains and crossing the glaciers to arrive at the symbolic Muktana. What's the relationship between mind and the mountain? What does consciousness have to do with geography, with the natural landscape? Why the mountains? The natural state of consciousness is, is wide open. And so uh, when you're on the peak of a mountain, you have the infinite sky and you have a 360 degree panorama. So that's a kind of a metaphor or similar to what the experience of meditation is when the mind climbs above all the conditioned activity, consciousness frees itself from its uh, uh, connections and reactions to uh, the body-mind process, it uh, expands and experiences this uh, state of expansion and, and freedom and wisdom that understands the ultimate nature of the mind is unconditioned.